Hi, I do have a very important topic and that was written on the 14th of November in 2015 and it was actually part of writing that was done for a client and it says earth is a place where there exists a balance where you learn of opposites but earth is not reality what this means is that earth is just a creation a place of invention like a game and in all games there are roles to play and rules to follow earth is one dimension of existence there are infinite places but only one true reality called divine love you return to this once dead and this place is the source of all and every place that it exists it is the only truth when a person dies there is no satan or hell or judgment waits you review your life and even though this is hard for everyone to accept you laugh at it as if as if it was the funniest joke you had played on yourself there is no sin no help you do not get judged by a vengeful angry god you are welcomed with love and reunite with others who passed over do over too do take joy in this we are telling you the truth if you are still uncertain even the bible and corinthians say love forgives always remember that love forgives but there is nothing once you are dead to ask forgiveness for. Religion has caused so much heartache and pain. It is wrong. Divine love is for all. Now, before I finish, if you are interested, please consider buying my first book called Seeing the Spirituality Behind the Negativity. A menu for the game of life. I wrote it not to convert people. You don't have to believe it. It was a truth for me and I hoped it helped people too because we are told so many lies, so many myths and are blinded by our own illusion. And I wanted to be able to help people. But I don't care if you view the book as an act, oh, sorry, as fiction, that, or as entertainment. It was a book that I wrote asking a lot of personal questions, and it deals with a lot of issues. It deals with death and dying. It deals with disease. Now that's very interesting, the topic of disease. It deals with Christianity. There's a lot of stuff about aliens in there. A lot of stuff about conspiracies. And a lot of stuff about opposite and opposing forces. Uh, and this is, if you can see that, that is what I wanted for in a second book. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, oh, I'm happy for comments. As I said, you don't have to agree with it. Everybody has their own right to their own views. I once was a Christian but couldn't accept, as it is in Corinthians, love is perfect. But if you have a God who is judgmental and angry, who sends you to hell because you are a sinner, that 
image of God is made in the image of man. It's not a perfect God because perfect love forgives. So, um, I became a Christian when I was 16 and stopped when I was 26. But I was a psychic or got in contact in spirits and saw things at the age of 10. But when I became a Christian, it, my growth was really stunted because they tried to say that that kind of stuff was demonic possession. And yet the Bible says you judge a work or you judge something by its, the, its fruits. And my first automatic writing came from this place of love. I'm a believer in David Icke and support and my work supports a lot of his stuff. Now I have done and I've been laughed at on YouTube. Um, I've been laughed at because what has happened is the last couple of years in my life some bad things went down, a lot of drama. And when you get caught in the drama, you live in the drama, you live in the illusion, and you forget to connect. I had forgotten to connect, so I hadn't been very psychic. But before that, I used to do cold readings. People would just say, oh, we did do a reading and I've got proof. And I said, don't tell me anything. I don't want to know anything. I'll do some channeling for you. And if anything rings true, then pay me $30 and I'll do three pages for you. And not, I had 100% accuracy. I was that accurate that I went to a medieval fair many, many years ago. And unbeknownst to me, just by touching this girl's hand, I told her very accurately about her past. She was so impressed, she went to her father, who happened to be the manager, or like the guy who ran the medieval fair, and I was offered a job. But they moved that fair to a, another city where I couldn't go. So I didn't take it up. I also very accurately um, got in channeling into a, a murder that happened here. And I'm not going to reveal everything, but I wrote, I wrote and gave this information to the police. I didn't say who I was. I did it anonymously. And I was right. Everything. I got goosebumps because the things were that I said, like property, cars, person, everything was correct. Now, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet because there are some people who, I'll admit, they're close to me. I can't read everything. And people say, well, if you're psychic, why can't you pick your own lotto numbers? Well, one night I had a dream. And in Australia, your lotto numbers go from 1 to 45. And my dream was that I picked five out of the six numbers and the other one I got wrong. The dream came true. I picked five out of the six numbers and I picked the wrong number was 45 and the correct number was one. So see how close I came? And another time, and I've got proof, I can send you witnesses to this. I went to a casino and where, I think it's called, no, is it roulette? It's where you, you bet and a wheel goes round and you put 
chips on certain numbers. We only had very limited money and I went there and we did it only 12 times. 12 times in a row I got it correct and I did it and I can't explain this by using like a force in my head to stop that wheel on the number I wanted. It ha happened and because I was getting it so right they had like security guards coming out to investigate what I was doing because every time the wheel went round I concentrated on that number and I even had the the worker, the employee who spins the wheel say actually bend down and go like this to me and, and that wasn't the first time I've done it before and I've, oh, I've done some negative things too that have come true. And negativity, evil, is a very strong force. And I'm, not, I'm very ashamed and I'm not going to go into those things. Um, I am that accurate at saying what's happened in the past. I've had friends ask me to do things. And if you don't, if you've got something secretive and you don't want it revealed, I could, I'll bring it up. And the last one I did, I stopped because it was a really sensitive thing. I can even bring up people's names and the client doesn't tell me these names. I just know them. And I, the last one I did was about six lines, six to eight lines. And I thought, I've got to stop here. And I showed this friend and I said, look at this. This is really sensitive. And I never keep the clients think I give it to them. So I don't, I don't ha have any copies. And I said, and that this particular guy said, that's enough. I don't want you to do any more. You've just confirmed a really bad thing that's happened to me. Thank you. And the time before that, I was asked to do... A, a writing for somebody and I did and it came out with some really very sensitive stuff and they threatened my life over it so I vowed after that that I was never going to do channeling for friends I don't like to do future readings because my belief is that the future has many probabilities and possibilities and that thought creates. So if I read your future and you, so you've got prior knowledge of what's going to happen into your future and you say, gee, I don't like that, you change it. So it makes what I've predicted wrong because you didn't like it. And you can change it. And we all have the ability to change it. And... I've also um, done clearings of haunted houses and the last one I did, just before we moved to the town I now live in, I went to this place and in this house, in a specific room, I sensed these things and I told the lady about it and then I went out into the garden which was massive and I said there's a spirit here who was a farmer and he was really really sick and I think he had diabetes correct again and um, later I sent her some information and I said I think the house you're living in was used as a brothel and a drug house she she was shocked she said you're a hundred percent right. And another example, many who oh, about fifteen years ago I went and did a clearing for another friend and I walked into a specific part of the house and I said, This is where the haunting is occurring and 
I believe it's a little old Chinese man. Now, when I first said it, and I said it, um, it's moved on, the person, the, the father, and this man didn't say, Haha, you're making this up. Then when I said it was a Chinese man, he went white. And he said, my son has said that he has been visited by 